There's no special rules for accounting with Bitcoin. It's just just like taking any other currency. And so um, accountants are getting to the point where they've kind of got that figured out. And that's uh, that's pretty straightforward. Um, the implications of taking Bitcoin, I think, um, changes a few things when you're using it as a payment method. So as Adam mentioned, one of the most important elements of Bitcoin is that it's trustless. And what that means is, isn't that there's no, like it's impossible to have a transaction with no trust in the transaction. But what it, what it does is it removes the trust from the transaction layer. And so normally, um, you know, if I want to pay for something, if I go to a restaurant and I want to pay for something with my credit card, um, you know, I'm trusting my credit card company. I'm trusting the bank that issued the card. Uh, the merchant is trusting their merchant processor who in turn is trusting the credit card company. Um, and you kind of have this, this web of trust that isn't really all that clear um, who's in charge or who's being trusted with what. And in a situation like that, the result is that it, it actually takes a long time to reach finality. So if I wanted to charge back, if I go out for a meal and I wanted to charge that back, with a regular credit card, you have about 60 days to charge that back. And so for the merchant, um, they're trusting me not to do that. They're trusting their, their merchant services providers not to do that as well. Um, what Bitcoin changes is because it's a completely uh, final transaction, as soon as that transaction is uh, is confirmed, there's no way to reverse that. It just sort of moves the trust around. And so in some cases that can be a pretty big benefit to a business. You know, if I wanna pay a business in Bitcoin, uh, the trust relationship is much simpler. I'm just trusting them, that's it. And so we run into some cases where uh, some businesses that deal in uh, high risk payments or have a lot of chargebacks are taking only Bitcoin for payments. Hmm. So a really good example we had a few years ago was we had a high school class um, that all had to buy like 500 bucks worth of Bitcoin because they were all going on a, they were going on a tour, uh, like a graduation class trip in Mexico. And the tour operator would normally take a deposit and uh, you know, some of the kids decide they don't want to go or their parents change their minds and the parents just charge the credit card back. And at that point, uh, this little tour operator in Mexico doesn't have any means to fight visa and uh, they're just stuck taking the loss. And so at that point, what was the point of the deposit anyway, right? And so what the tour operator started doing was saying, uh, from now on, Bitcoin only for deposits because these are permanent irreversible payments. And all these kids had to come and buy Bitcoin. And from the tour operator's perspective, he got 100% of his deposits and there was no way for anyone to claw that back. So. We find, um, as we talk to our customers, lots of weird little ways like this that um, they're using the, the the trustless nature of the payment network to solve these kind of issues and to find like the margins that are currently costing businesses uh, money in the traditional system.